Gotta remember, it's still, still a fairly new project with the Cillian in here, so I still think they're on the up and up. We'll be starting on the CT side for now. So big welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone in here, get on those fan cams if you can. Find a way to do it. We really do enjoy it, and um, yeah, tell all your friends about it too. If they don't know all I'm sure everyone has You'd certainly hope so. Or some kind of. Some. Anything. Anyway, JW, Crims going through the underpass towards middle. This, again, this could very <clears> much be a fake. We'll see if they try and head in towards window where Acor is, but they could try and attack the A bomb site with three players. The bomb and one other teammate, Brolin, are back in B-holes. There's JW boosted up. Good kill from Golden. That's an opening duel. That is a heads-up fight, and JW's got the next one. Bubski's going to try and recover the situation, but... Madlines realize their mistake. The B bomb site is lost entirely. And this oh. surely. Oh! All right. Golden just stomping on him. Gonna go for one more, and he's got it. Three headshots for Golden. What an absolute badass. He just. He caught the. They were all shooting at him. Uh, Madline saying that tech issue. Maybe their brains got scrambled by yeah, no, how mad that I, was. Yeah, if I got wrecked that hard, I'd call a tech issue as well. I'd be like, oh man, weird, my keyboard just stopped working as soon as you as soon as you peaked. Yeah. That was that was incredible. What a cool shot. Well, um I mean it was already looking good even before all of that, right? Winning the fight in window and also one in the B bomb site, that's that's a good start. But oh, but then Golden just stayed alive and with the P two fifty in there. The right tool. Listen, that's that's a that's an interesting interesting round for Fnatic just for purely the one reason of remember Golden when he's initially joined Fnatic. I know this was a while back, but even when he rejoined, you know the knock on Golden has always been individually can he actually stack up with the other players in the professional scene? And right here we just see Fnatic basically crafting a round where Golden is required to get a kill to make that fake work. Like, if you just put him with a P250 at that A bomb site the way they did on the T side, you're relying on him being bold enough to take that challenge and win that fight more often than not so that you force a rotation so that the players can actually attack into the B bomb site. So yeah. that's that's a pretty cool pretty cool facet of that strategy for me. But that can't keep being the, the, the criticism of Golden, right? I feel like he's proven it time and again that he actually can, you know, get no, I, kills. I think if you're holding on to that criticism of Golden, you're you're living in the past. Like yeah. you haven't quite updated updated the information in your brain because Golden is, has been putting in some work with this Fnatic lineup ever since he rejoined. Yeah, I really think so. Um, and I mean, I don't need him to be out fragging, you know, Brolin and and Crims and JW and all the rest like every round. I just need him to do. But sometimes he even does. That's what's so crazy. Like sometimes he actually is the guy just top fragging for uh, for some odd reason. This is a really, really cool kill. But the follow-up here, I mean, that's when you that's when he's feeling it. He's like, you know what? This is one of those rounds. I'm gonna go get this done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, after that little one tap in the previous kill, you might as well have the heat check. That was that was really sick. Yeah. Nice round from Golden. And um yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this uh, Fnatic team so far? I mean again, I am kind of on your side with in terms of, of just how they how they've been feeling online and I don't know. I mean, I, it doesn't really alarm me that much. I mean, the only thing is, obviously, we don't know how long we're okay. going to be playing like this online. So, um, you know, if you say, oh, it's going to be another month of online, and then and for that reason, you know, it kind of sucks to see Fnatic play maybe not at their optimal game. But obviously, if you scale that and you say, well, it's going to be 10 more months of online play, then I'd start to say, okay, well, now it's, now it's an issue. Now, now they actually need to take it seriously, right? Because that's just a long time to okay. be losing. So um, for me, it's just all about, like, the scale of it, and I guess no one knows. So... Maybe just prepare for the worst in some sense if you're a fanatic or any other team for that matter. Prepare for the worst. Yeah, be pleasantly surprised if it turns out you didn't need it. So. One to nothing. Two Mac tens on Flusha and Crims uh, for Fanatic. So they've got some uh, some hyper aggressive weaponry here. And they're gonna go for they're gonna go for some mid control. Crims, Golden, and Brolin gonna swing out top mid. That's a good H E nade on a Brolin. Down to 44 health. We've seen these rounds be so dangerous these past few days, Anders. It doesn't take much, does it? I mean, again, one of those rogue scouts, or if you're a little bit slow and you get deagled slowly down, um, it can definitely spin out of control pretty quickly. So they managed to do some return damage, but there are three flashbangs in play that could be, you know, popped into middle for, for a bit of a crunch. Might be what they're attempting to do here, Mad Lions. That would certainly be interesting. 
Well, two's on Acor. He's throwing one right now. Here comes the peek. They might be able to follow this up. Flusha gets a kill. Roy follows it up. A Cillian peeking from Catwalk. It's hectic, but Roy's got two kills. Bomb is down in mid as well. This is so dangerous for Fnatic. They're going to relocate over to Windroom and go for a follow-up peek. JW could sneak in though from the B bomb side where he jumped down, he could find a kill and that would that would actually cause a huge distraction. He's just in time for it to get the kill on a silly and that's gonna be nice. And now the fight continues, but Roy will also continue. Another shot coming out from him, make it a triple in his favor. And now what do they do? That bomb, I mean, it's been picked up by Crims, but they're in a two on three. Even if they have the health, this is such a risky round. It's all on JW. The spacing of Roy and Acor has to be perfect. There's the glimpse. JW doesn't get the kill. Oh, and he's so aggressive. He finds one. Crims with another. And he's got in a one-on-one. -on -one. Bomb is going to get planted inside the site. Crims with an AKA -A Acor with the Galil. Yep, but let's see what he could do. All he needs is a strong headshot to begin with, and he can't find it. Crims will take him down. That is close. A little bit of a wake-up call for Fnatic. That was, that was nearly Mad Lions completely turning the game around. He got the dink as well. Yeah. He got the dink on the Crims, just could not complete it. This is a very good eco round from Roy. Two kills here to follow up, and you can see the flashbangs being bombed over mid that whole time. Acor was back at triple boxes, lobbing those over the wall. Ooh, really, right, really nice dink. eco round for Mad Lines. Yeah, that was that was aggressive. Crims gets away with one there. Some deagles in play this round. This but... is another. Go on. Yeah, this is another this is another round for uh, for mid control. Looks like for Mad Lions, like they wanted the pounce. This time they just don't have the flashbangs or the scout, so it should be an easy cleanup for Fnatic. It's a bit of a weird uh, flashbang that Golden ended up failing there, almost grenading a teammate as well. So time to slow it down here, Fnatic. Just I mean they've got it all. They've got them locked in behind the smokes. They should be winning this round no matter what. And JW, <laughs> a lot of bullets in that Galil. He will clean it all up. That's good. I like that. I like that from JW. Yeah, good play. Six kills on J-Dubs, uh, five on Golden. They're going to lead the way for Fnatic at the moment. It's three kills on Roy and two for Acor. And he's got the op in hand. And this is perhaps one of the most exciting oppers we have in all of Counter-Strike. Not, not the best, not the most dominant, but the decisions he makes, Acor, is so, so much fun to watch. It is. It's. It's. You know. It almost feels like when you when you get to that point of the game where everyone else is like, I'm, I can't. It is too uncomfortable. I, you know, it's a really high risk. If I miss a shot, I'm. I'm dead. That's where Acor just wants to be at all times. Like, and then and then he finds those places and he just keeps pushing, uh, which is uh, and it's that really world. And that world to to live in as a Counter Strike player has so much more success online than it does on LAN. So <laughs> I mean, this point. might be this might be a situation you can you can even hear Maniac say on the desk he's one of the players that seems to fade away under pressure. We'll see at home. There's no pressure. Good opening kill for JW. Even has information. Knows there's one more in connector, and he's looking for a follow up peek from elsewhere. Meanwhile, B bomb site is under attack for Fnatic, and they've got it. Yeah, Cillian needed to win. I mean, even two fights wouldn't have been enough, but it would have maybe bought a chance. I, th I don't think they should go for this, Mad Lions. They're so far away. They have, you know, three right. Yeah, they're going to go back off. That's a good choice. Hard call to make, but at the same time, that wasn't even the Cillian's fault. I think even if a Cillian had got another kill, they probably still lose the round. That's, I don't know. That oh, was yeah. just a, a great kill inside of B. I mean, the great time to hit B basically for Fnatic. Well, you know, we, you and I always, always talk about, you know, why teams don't, don't have more of like a control mid defense setup on this map, um, and, and I think we're seeing another part of the reason why teams have kind of shied away from that. Fnatic has really been exploiting it. Mad Lions have had heavy emphasis on protecting mid, on having presence there, on having two to three players there, and Fnatic have basically found that B bomb site almost for free, maybe two rounds so far, half the rounds that have been played, by just, you know, having one small minor presence in mid, and then three players coming out of the holes. So Mad Lions are gonna have to be very careful about protecting the extremities of the map and not overemphasizing mid. Yeah, because that, I mean, that is definitely one of the I mean, potential weaknesses, and you're right. It does feel like there's no winning for the teams, right? If they, if they don't hold middle, then we start to criticize that. If they do, it does leave some of the weaknesses, so. We could be pretty critical when it comes to these things. Oh, that grenade though, right <laughs> on top. That's what we want. Then Bobski with the spray. That was so well set up. He he just nuked their team. 
that was, I mean, you say so well set up, I'm just going to go with luck. <laughs> That's a good good timing on the nade, good spray control as well. Fnatic have to be equally frustrated that their double nade sack into the window didn't result in anything. And Bubski's been trained to fear this B-bomb site. He's already rotated over, and that is a nasty angle. Yeah, it is. Fnatic again, I mean, it's fine if they start to lose some rounds. I mean, they were hit 4-0, but do some damage, right? Get... Get something in return here. That would be nice so that Mad Lions don't have too much of a victory and start to build their bank, you know, too quickly. Golden and Flusher in the middle. And I think Mad Lions smartly not really... It's not very hard to find isolated fights right here if you're a uh, Golden or Flusher. <laughs> that was the first like. Well, they're was... looking for a bump scheme. Yeah, they were. Yeah, that's a good find. The spin around. Flush has got it with the help of Golden right through the box. Oh, and the follow-up with the flash into the window. Again, finding a couple of things right there. Third one would be brilliant, but Golden is getting shot in the back all the way over from the V-bomb side, picking up the bomb with 24 seconds left. And I think he realizes he's pretty much just uh, inside of a huge triangle here, and it's not going to be easy to get out. 15 seconds. Started to move up, but Bobski will find him quad kill for him in the round. And I don't know, Fnatic making it at, at least a bit expensive, which I kind of appreciate. Yeah, nice attempt from Golden right at the end as well. Trying to take a risk across it at the bomb site, trying to mask his drop down. But certainly that opening provided by Bumski. Three kills in the round. These two with the spam through the smoke. And we see players attempt that quite frequently. Very rarely do we see it result in a double kill in that fashion. Yeah, you're right. It, it does seem like a lot of grenades. I, I wonder if anyone has stats on it, how many are thrown and how many, how many actually do anything up to that top mid corner there. There's Acor, not even afraid of still sticking around there, smoking off the underpass. He's got some teammates in connector, but yeah, he's kind of stuck for the minute. We'll see if he can find a way out. He can't. Crims will just take him down. Heads up play through the underpass. Yeah, pretty safe way for Crims to help clear out that angle or maybe force Acor into a decision he didn't quite want to make. Fnatic is running out of nades down the stretch, though. Two flashes, a Molotov, and a smoke, and Flush has got 14 health. So at least the aggression from Acor has flushed out a lot of that, and every smoke counts. So Golden better use this for something. Bomb is still way, way far back at the entrance to the B tunnels. JW sneaking in like that. Wants that smoke to fade, but somehow Roy is able to see him just a bit earlier. And that's a big giveaway. No chance for a reply there for Golden. He's going to go down to Bubski, who was just in the window for a second. Crim's hoping to see someone over him. And that smoke fades. I think he might have the edge against Asilian, but that still might not be enough. This is a 2 on 4, and no, it goes the other way. Asilian will take him down, and now Mad Lions are really swinging back in this game in a big way. Fnatic are also out oh, of money. Oh, yeah. They're, they're starting to heat up now. Yeah, they're going to be dead broke after this. Flush it with exactly zero dollars. Same with JW and Golden. Roy has an easy cleanup. And Mad Lions with their second round on the board. And they're able to salvage the AWP for Acor. Yeah, this is a this is the beginning of a, of a decent-sized comeback. It's not even the fact that they've just won the two rounds. The fact that, you know, they save how many, what, three rifles in the first one they win, four rifles in this round for Mad Lions. So, you know, that's going to give them some money to work with. And then Fnatic also running out of money and not getting the bomb plants. So a couple of different swings there going in favor of Mad Lions. Acor now with the op just holding an angle towards mid. Risky play. Oh my lord. That's this is what we're talking about when the decisions that Acor makes are just they don't really register at a whole lot of other people's brains. Maybe JW is here. Maybe he's like <laughs> they they have a kinship of the way that they try and play the game. Maybe JW just understands him. It's like I respect that. You're also mentally ill, so <laughs> just appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, well, I certainly appreciate it. I, I don't know what that says about me, but I love it. I <laughs> think it's so much fun. No, I, I do too, but it is just sometimes you just have to shake your head and wonder. Yeah, why? Why exactly? Three people in the middle with pistols. They need a 
a kill, and then they, they need to go, I think. That was nice from Brolin, but I kind of almost wish they could follow it up. Deep grenade, and Shush also on the other side. Bobski trying to help out, and just with a bit of a reload, but they should be able to take uh, care of this. They know exactly where Golden is, and he is just, uh, the question is if he can get your kill, or if he's just going to go down. With Glock, <laughs> not much happening there. That's three in a row. Yeah, three in a row, and they actually, you know, preserve the economy pretty well. In those three rounds, they've only lost four players, so not too bad in terms of building the amount of money. What is the... Uh... And that op is starting to get comfortable in Acor's hands. Yep. What's the saying? Real recognize real, I think, is the... Is the... Maybe that's what's going on between JW and Acorn. Yeah. <laughs> Some just, uh, you know, some some professional appreciation. Here's some mid-aggression. Flashbang coming over from spawn side. Two players pushing up. Shush gonna lead the way. Counter flash for Fnatic is good, but the kill goes the way of Mad Lions. So does the follow-up. And the third, that's with the help of Roy. And Mad Lions have taken hold of mid. It's been a while since I've seen a CT side actually successfully win middle, but this is the fourth round, I think, where, where in some fashion, maybe not always this aggressively, but Mad Lions are actually coming out on top of the mid fight. So Fnatic may have to, at some point, say, maybe we just don't put so much emphasis on it. They don't have to do it. I mean, you, you can, you could do something else. You could just keep an eye on middle for a while. And especially if Mad Lions keep pushing, maybe you just, you know, fish for them a little bit and hang out and see if they're going to be walking into your crosshair. But this is so expensive. Two versus four. Any kills they can get would be helpful. If they can crack their way to the B bomb site, that'd be huge, but I don't think there's a possibility. You even have Roy up in the B holes. He's an insurance policy. Although, if anyone was going to sniff that out, it would be Flusha. For the moment, he's just causing a distraction. The main goal is the A bomb site where the defense is passive. JW, he wanted the knife. You could tell he was getting close up for that. But now they found an opening. One player in spawn, it's Acor, and JW knows his position. Yeah, he does. Want to make sure you don't give this one up. Shot comes through. He's not really fallen back yet. He's stuck in this corner. And they know he's still going to pick up the kill on Flusher. And that's really big news. That could have been a two-on-two -two and very, very awkward indeed. Now instead, I think everyone is close enough by that JW can't make it work. And Mad Lions will win the round. But that actually was more scary than it looked for a minute. Yeah, I, I felt like Acor didn't get the information. Because remember, Mad Lions heard one pressure in Catwalk towards the B-bomb site, that was Flusha, and then JW gets the kill in, in jungle. It feels like Acor should have had the information of where both players were, but Acor kept looking in other directions. Regardless, he gets the kills anyways. It was just a bit interesting watching his, his decisions. Well, well, that's a four-round comeback, and again, Fnatic, I mean, more rounds with no bomb plants, more rounds where they lose the middle. And it's happening again. A call with the. I mean, they don't have the Eagles, but still, I would at this point. I would love to see them do something that isn't isn't that mid fight. Maybe use Ooh. the fact that Mad Lions nice have two or three people in the middle. Yeah, and now, well, now you get the chess game, right? If you're a fanatic and you want to call something different and Mad Lions can just say, all right, we've had success in mid. Let's maybe, you know, you can still bust out some aggression towards Palace. A core actually has a pretty decent spawn. Was a core that? and Roy could actually hustle over. Yeah, you're right. Was that um, was that Asilian doing a little golf clap? A little maybe a little shout out to Hiko. If you, <laughs> if you remember, because he yeah, the old school Hiko golf clap. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We'll give it to Hiko. It's been a while. Brolin takes some damage. It has been a while. It's been a minute. Acor with a nice pick, and there it is. There's that switch up instead of mid. This time it's towards a ramp. That's got to feel... That, I'd be really annoyed at this point, right? Because that's... Again, you haven't been losing that mid-fight, so you try and and at least go somewhere else, and, and you run into the people who were previously in middle. Still, Roy's in there. Yeah. He does love playing that position. I mean, Fnatic, sh I mean, especially JW, should be well-versed in the mobility on Mirage with an AWP. He's going to know all of these kinds of plays, and it's just good to see Mad Lines using the AWP as you should. Mobile, starting it out, opening up rounds with it in different positions each time. And you can see, even now, it's being shifted to the B bomb site. It's rotated all the way over on Acor. And that will allow them, if they'd like to, to actually rotate Acilian away from the B bomb site. They and this is just to. typical Danish Counter-Strike as well. Uh, sorry, they're, they're look at how they're just playing passively towards the A-bomb site. When this set piece and this hit comes in, Mad Lines is already committed to the retake. They don't need to actually try and defend the bomb site itself. 
Yeah, what they'd love is to, you know, s snipe someone away, get another kill on someone, or do some damage as they're trying to put the bomb down. But you're absolutely right. Retake is definitely on if that's what it comes down to. 28 seconds. Smoke to buy some more time. Nice kill from Flusher. It looked like he was strafing and shooting at the same time and taking down Roy. But look at Shush. He's actually moved all the way in there. He's no longer thinking about the retake. He's in top of the smoke that he himself put down, and he gets killed inside of it. Now the bomb is being planted. Bubski trying to stop it, but not successfully so. And there is a flank from Brolin. I think this round has fallen apart here. Fnatic might have just found the key. There's Brolin coming in with a long range flank there, and now it's going to be just a one versus three. Bubski fighting all over the place and eventually gets taken down. That's what a that's a strange strange defense. We're looking at the way that they're set up and already prepared for retake, already prepared to just kind of sit back, let it happen, maybe get one kill on the entrance, and then collectively Mad Lions decided to go against that, but not as a team. This fight here, Roy overextended, not playing for retake. That's way too aggressive. That's Shush trying to make up for Roy's death, and they just dropped the whole round. It crumbles from there. So we're all tied up at five. Indeed, we are. Pushed into the A Palace there, and Acor in the middle. Again, this is just in the opening 10 seconds of the round, and Mad Lions have dropped two of the Fnatic players, and they should be able to win the round again. This is just a question now of playing it safely and getting trades, but Bowski behind the smoke. My god, Fnatic, they actually, I think they might be a little bit shocked at just how aggressive this is. I'm a bit shocked. Yeah, Bowski, Bowski has no fear. He is not afraid of any of those pushes. Krims, you have to imagine what a disadvantage he's at. He goes down. Yeah. Mad Lions maintain a one-round lead. That's that's fairly aggressive. I mean, it's it, and it's aggressive. This is uh, Fnatic's the map, right? in some trouble. Yes, Fnatic is in some trouble in this round. They are in this in this half, I should say. The four rounds they won initially to start this half were based off the economic advantage of winning the pistol round. They've only won a single gun round. This is a six to one run for Mad Lions. Well, the uh, odds don't really quite reflect it yet. Uh, Mad Lions still a little bit, uh, you know, unfavored. I guess, I mean, it's five to six, still a pretty good, a good amount of rounds for, uh, for Fnatic to have in the first half on T-side Mirage. Yes. So I guess that kind of does make sense, but I'd say it's pretty impressive what Mad Lions are doing at the moment. Maybe it'll change later on. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, no. That grenade right on top. More Molotovs that they rain into. Bobski having a great time over here at the B-bomb side. He'll get the triple kill, and they win the round in just a really short time. That might be the most impressively coordinated defense at the B-bomb site I've seen in a long time. There was no chance for success for Fnatic. They had a Molotov drop on them in the halls. They had two nades drop on them in the halls. And they had a Molotov on the ground when they jumped out of the window eventually. There was no chance for Get success there. Oh, let's go! Wow. We've got Danish fans, some guy with a UK flag as it, well. Some of them, I think, painted the Danish flag themselves. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to handle, Did she Jason. say, did she say, yeah, the boys? She, she might have been doing that. I, I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't hear. Isn't that, a, isn't, isn't that an Australian thing? We've got painted flags, we've got a British flag, we've got Australian chants. Yeah, uh, I mean, we'll just take it all at this point in time. Those people look crazy, <laughs> but it was the right kind of crazy. Much appreciate the fan cams. Keep it coming, guys. Definitely, you know, it'll, it'll really help us out. Great source of entertainment. No one has painted their faces yet, have they? In With, uh, you know, the colors of the, the flags. That's That must be the next level. Yeah, not quite yet. It's relatively easy to do with the Danish flag as well. That'd be, that'd be a simple feat. Yeah. Here we go. Krim's going to lead the way with the Deagle. Shush up on the balcony. Can turn around whenever he wants. But he's he's careful. They could be coming in from Palace. First kill for Roy. They know where everyone is. And Fnatic trying to cross the line. But it's just not there. It's just not available to him. Even... Oh! I take it back. Golden has opened it right up. Those kills all came in from Fnatic after, essentially, Mad Lions had stopped the whole push and the round was pretty much done. And then suddenly, a bunch of kills and another one! Golden! What? Taking down Bobski. He walked right into the Deagle. I can't really believe it. No bomb plant yet. JW repositioning and Asilian right on top. Golden, he seems to know and he will take him down. What a play! An ace from Golden! That's a two on five with nowhere to go. I cannot believe Golden just pulled that off.
That is, that is just so ridiculous, isn't it? Unbelievable. And you, what's even crazier about it is JW was wrapping back around to Palace. Golden was all on his own at that last kill. He was completely abandoned and isolated. Holy hell, what a huge victory. What an incredible effort. And finally, JW comes out on top of Acor in the all battle. Nice, nice kill there from Shush, but he couldn't really fall back. He knew that he was going to be in so much trouble now. Trying to recover it is Roy. He'll get a kill. Back to checking middle, but he's very, very exposed out here. Yeah, he needs to either fall back or get some backup in here. Someone could maybe flash him in for a fight if he really wanted to, but it's a three-on-three -three right now, and it's going to be a quick bomb plant coming through from the Fnatic team. Man, Mad Lions need to win these last two rounds. I think Fnatic have already done a very, very good job in this first half. It's just classic Fnatic. Just a miraculous victory from Golden in the previous round, and it seems to energize all of them. This round is convincing that they take the A-bomb site. JW getting that up situated in Palace. He's going to have a very deep angle. It's going to be hard to cross. Smoke comes in, Molotov comes in, Flush and Golden. One goes down, one gets a kill, and Flush is still inside the site. There's JW from above, and he's even got a Molotov. And he's going to throw it down right in front and then goes for it. Oh, man, he would have had him no matter what. And then we've got some tricks coming up, styling on him after he's dead. 7-7. Seven to seven. Fnatic tie up the scoreline here. Man, that, that, was a, that was a crazy round right there. Another one, in fact. Well, now it's, uh, now it's a very good half for Fnatic. Now they're, now they're loving the life. Seven rounds on your T side. And even figuring out a, a way to scrape together some at the end in these gun rounds, it would look so suffocating for a while. Seven to one run for Mad Lines and Fnatic. Oh, no. That's not exactly What are the great. odds of that? <laughs> we, we're obviously going to get that one on replay. Yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mad Lions. It's crazy when you look at the scoreboard because you're way ahead of everyone else is, is Bubski at 17 and 7. But on the other time, it's, it's Golden and GW doing almost all of the work. They're, uh, they're putting in an enormous amount of effort and it's paid off. Now they're getting even helped out by Mad Lions. Oh, nice timing. Ooh. Yeah, good flash from JW as well. Vasilian had no chance in that fight backing up as well. What? You can see that building. I can't believe Bubski is what a madman jumping out through a smoke in window room for a double kill. That is a super, that's a Batman level play. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's just the kind of thing that shouldn't really work. Now, almost walking into the off shot there, I believe. Not quite going to happen. We'll see what they could do. It's a final round, so they are obviously going to go for the retake here. They've got Acor on one side, Roy and Bobski coming in on the other side. Now, just how much can Bobski do in this first half? And Fnatic, they are far back on the bomb side. They want to buy and play for time here. They've got another Molotov in play on JW, and he's going to go down. The Roy with a kill, but he's traded, and now it's on Acor. Running in with the AWP, just cruising through, taking down Crims. Can he actually find this? He's going to tap the bomb, but it's a long defuse. No. 10 seconds. There is no way that's going to happen. He turns for it, but he's still going to lose the round. It's eight in the first half for Fnatic. Brilliant start for the score. Golden, what, I, what more can you say about the guy? I, like, They were having a good half, but Golden's Deagle Ace rounds that is, is what let them scrape together the final three of the half and close it on a positive note and take a lead into the CT side of Mirage. So what an impactful player he was, especially considering his success in the pistol. Oh, they want to go aggressive in the middle. I like it. They got the USPs in the pit. Oh, it doesn't matter. Bowski fighting back. Quick triple. And that is the fight won by Mad Lions. I thought that was going to go all Fnatic's way. They had USPs in the window. They had Flusher down on the low ground. I think the USP should have won that fight, but somehow it doesn't work out that way. I mean, you talked about Golden and you're right too, but <laughs> Bobski's been on, out of control in this game. How, did, how does a Glock even get those three kills that fast? Golden, a chance. He's shut down. No, but Brola knows where both players are. There's an opportunity, but he needs to find these kills, at least one of them very, very quick. He's going to leave the Palace player alone. He's going to dip out to try and find this pick, but the footsteps are going to give it away. Shush doesn't even have to commit to this fight if he doesn't want to. Kit and Smoke are both picked up. That's what he ran the route for. And this is all that's left. It's a Hail Mary. Drop the smoke, get the defuse. Oh, I don't know if that'll be... And Roy peeks before he even gets on it. Oh, eight to eight. That would have been sick. That would have been so sick. I, I've... I was rooting for Roland there. I actually thought for a second when he ran the window that he just wanted to save the armor and get the kit and, you know, bring it in the next round. But he actually had a real chance. Yeah, I don't know how the Glock is doing all of this, but it is.
that's Mad Lions winning the pistol, and uh, they probably needed this round, let's be fair. Fnatic have done a great job. Seventeenth round. Just a bit of grenade damage landing on Crims. He's got a scout, JW has a scout. So, so this is a round where there's a bit of danger, I think, for Mad Lions. Zillion with the UMP in the underpass. He's he's being pretty careful. He's got some backup in there, so all across the board, they are they're well aware at the moment that Fnatic could be aggressive and could be the team to try and uh, and push up to find something. So I kind of respect what Mad Lions are doing here. Yeah, they're very spread across the map as well. I think the one danger point is you want to make sure that first initial contact that you choose to take if you're Mad Lions have two players there, unless they're going to push into you in that fashion. Just be careful you don't get whittled down. This is one of those rounds that the scouts can do so much damage. The CZs can do so much damage. Bobski's going to toy with danger. He's brought down to 56. Golden already going down, but I mean, yeah, the damage output here. Bobski nearly gone. Brolin, the only player left defending the A-bomb side, and that's an issue for what's coming. Yeah, Shush is in a good... Ooh, that footstep hurts. Uh, a little bit of drive-by damage. Actually going to get the kill on Fusher regardless. Roland would have loved some backup in Crims is there, but again, it's just not enough. The MP5 will uh, get some action. Don't get to see that very often, but it works out pretty well here for a double kill. That leaves AW in the middle with the scout in play, so... They survive or any, any danger that might have been. Mad Lions make it through. And it's going to be another round then before Fnatic can uh, could do much of anything. Next round going to be uh, just a straight up save. Yeah, going to have to be. You'll have this one scout. It's a tough hole to put yourself in uh, on the CT side early on. Mad Lions did the same thing in the first half. It led to four straight Fnatic rounds. Or excuse me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's correct. Don't doubt yourself, Jason. Why do I ever doubt myself? I know. It's, it's weird. Keep the faith. You know, all that. <laughs> I don't know, like, I... I well, just, we'll... S yeah. It's just when I look at it, I, I just keep feeling like Mad Lions should be winning this game really badly, but there's every chance that this could turn around. It's just when I look at Bobski, he's got 24 and 9. How's that not a winning scoreline? I guess Sicilian's got 4 kills and Shush on 9, but... I don't know. It's it's like uh, I don't know. Fnatic did just enough, right? They had a, they had that miraculous golden round with the deagle. I mean, they, they did just enough in that first half to give themselves a buffer. That's what those last three rounds were. They were kind of a bit of a gift that they just snatched away. That gave yeah. them a bit more breathing room. Yeah, maybe you're right. You have to think. I mean, there was one, maybe two rounds in that first half that were just taken away from Mad Lines, just snatched right out of their hands. So flashbang on Flusher, and they are all stacked up there by the by the box in the A. This could be really fun. I think if they I think if they come through, then that flashbang is going to go out, and everyone's going to go fight. I don't know if it'll actually work, but you see how they're all there, <laughs> and Flusher's behind them with a the flashbang. This is. Here's the problem with this stack. As soon as it's spotted, right? Like, surely just some spam straight up comes out into the box and kills all three. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with this setup, but I still kind of want to see it. Or or they, or Mad Lions just back away. Yeah. Oh, wait, they can maybe get there. JW's holding the line for a minute. They need that flashbang to work. There it comes, and now they need to fight. JW's down, and the backup is not quite there. The MP5 getting even more action, and that's the round. 10 to 8. Nothing ever really worked out for Fnatic in that one. Now they've got a good shot. It's a though. rare MP5 sighting. <clears throat> that weapon doesn't get nearly as much love as I feel it deserves. No, and we, I mean, weren't we all for years asking Valve to put the MP5 in? And then when they did, everyone was like, ah, oh, yeah. meh, guess not. Yeah, it's actually kind of crap. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah, well, I do as well. Oh, it's, it's turned a bit. The fans, the betters have started to swing slightly towards Mad Lions, so they've made an impression on the people watching, Jason. That's that's something. Yeah, but 
I find that halfway a little bit crazy considering Mad Lions have to get nine rounds on this T side if they want to close out this map. Asilian waiting for the timing. He's hearing the footsteps. Nobody's watching this for the moment. There was a window of opportunity while he hides in this smoke, but it's Brolin with the double. There's the walkthrough, but Crims is ready. He has been a rock and connector for six or seven years of Counter-Strike, and Brolin gets four kills in the round. That's an easy shutdown for Fnatic. A lot of people want their bets back <laughs> after seeing that. It's thinking, oh, oh dear, this is... This yep, is what have I doing, done? Yeah, this is Brolin doing so much work. Absolutely amazing. And that's in their first, I mean, again, the first rifle round for Fnatic in this half. They're just like, yep, that's it. Oh, did we have some audio from them? I'm not sure. We did have some audio. It wasn't great audio. It was subpar audio for 2020. Here's a court run boost up towards top mid. Looking through the smoke as well, hoping someone peeks over the top of it, but they're going to peek below. That's Crims. He's getting behind the smoke. He wants to clear out underpass, but he can peek very wide with the flashbang. There's a timing on this, a risky play, and Crims, here's the scope. Good find from Asilian, and a better trade from JW. Yeah, a bit dangerous still for Fnatic trading evenly like that, but it's certainly better than just letting them go. Bomb is really far away. Roy is waiting for someone to, you know, peek out in those hallways. Bobski's over there. Could be probably making some noise or maybe trying to snipe a kill away. And then I guess they're going to probably end up at the A-bomb site. Shush in the connector. If a core goes and joins Roy, then this could be an interesting, interesting attempt to try and weaken the A defense, which I don't know if they're doing yet. Shush is kind of, yeah, he's, he's there a little bit early, actually. He's just waiting around for the smoke to fade. Well, it's Brolin in the cubby and JW to watch both for a window boost and for this play-up connector. And he's also trapped by any player in Palace. Good find for JW. One more can be added on, but not quite there. Bumski very low, but that might be the kill that turns this. Mad Lines have the man advantage. The bomb is going to get planted, and there's no way Fnatic can stop it. <laughs> hey, Cole. Planning the bomb wide open. I mean, he did have Roy there with him, but still, that's so dangerous when you're not actually controlling CT spawn. Still... When they get the bomb down, it all works out just fine. And I don't know if, I've, if I'm fanatic, I might not want to throw away these rifles. Well, Flush has got a Molotov. He can at least investigate if he wants to throw that in towards Dark. And I bet now he's regretting it because his teammate's already gone down. Roy pushes out. Acor's got the angle with the AWP. That's an 11th <clears throat> round for Mad Lions. Taking away the rifles. And I mean, that was, that was a nice slowdown after the initial fight in middle. All they needed was that uh, that one victory towards jungle. And I guess they also took down who was in the cubby. Was that Brolin? He didn't really have a chance yes. either. Back to pistols now. No chance streets. at all. Yeah, that's the that's the toughest part. These these, you know, gun round save combinations are, are pretty brutal. And not really a whole lot to fight with. No scouts picked up this time as well. So you don't have any of that long range weaponry to at least maybe damage a couple players to get the multi kills easier. So this will all be uh, another chance for Fnatic to have a miraculous uh, round with the pistols, like Golden delivered earlier. I mean, that would be a classic Fnatic type setup, wouldn't it? If they were able to to just pull out a round out of nowhere, it's kind of what we love to see. But um, not so much Mad Lions, I'm guessing. I mean, if they win this round, they go up 12-9. Then Fnatic could buy again. And then they actually have to make that round work, or it's the, or the ground beneath them just becomes really, really shaky. Decent grenade. Slow approach. I mean, for how crazy Mad Lions were playing on the CT side, their T side's actually been pretty, pretty sane. Yeah, they, they ride a really fine line between, like, you know the structure and the the fundamentals of danish counter-strike champion by astralis and also the insanity of, of you know deathmatch and craziness you know provided by Fnatic in the past it does feel like you know mad lions at least you know the, this core of it almost feels like if you took like a younger astralis and gave them crazy pills that's <laughs> that's not completely wrong no they they do uh, especially on that ct side they like to get a little bit mental Asilian controlling catwalk for the moment, looking for any flank. Maybe wants to go take the AK-47 away from Brolin, but he's booked it. He's all the way on the other side of the map already, so Fnatic will at least have that AK for the next round. They can pass over to probably Crims. Speaking of Crims. 
Vul looking for a 1D because they jump past. Oh, he's doing damage, but the reload was too much to handle. And they'll lose a couple of more players. Brolin has got the AK, and he will be just fine with that. Bubski will add another triple kill to his list. He is up at 31 kills in just 21 rounds. What in God's name is going on, Jason? He's playing like he's back at home, comfortable in his own bedroom, drinking a Diet Coke. <laughs> Three round lead for Mad Lions. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's nothing like running into to, to the online superheroes. <laughs> Here we go. Bubski gonna now pressure towards the B-bomb site, jumping in past the Molotov, or at least he thought it would be past, but he gives up that when Golden drops the fire at his feet. Oh, wow. That's so much damage from the grenade. Tags up Bubski. So far, that hasn't put a slowdown in there. He's going to keep going. Golden will shoot him in the face, and that will absolutely slow him down. Smoke to put out the Molotov, but Golden still dies. And if they lose Flusher here, and they will, Acor coming up close, leading the charge in from Catwalk. That's a huge problem. Crim's going down. They need to stop trying to do this. They need to fall back, Fnatic. That was... That was a quick knockout to the B-bomb side. Two kills is all they needed. Yeah, and now I think Mad Lions have to chase. I think if you're not going to be aggressive here to take these weapons away, you're missing an opportunity to put Fnatic really on the back foot. They don't have a whole lot of money to work with. The only benefit is that saved AK-47 from the previous round gives Flush a 2400 to work with. If you can take these guns away at the end... But the hunt is not coming. So, 13-9. to 9, Fnatic having a real, real difficult time controlling this attack. Yeah, they really are. Brolin and JW. At least they're going to be able to save the uh, the rifles here, but that's that's no longer so much of a talking point, right? You're at the point now where you say, well, saving rifles and all the rest of it is like, we, we needed to win some rounds now. It's been a bit of a streak going on here for Mad Lions. Yeah, once they get that kill on Golden, Flusher is in a lot of trouble. Oh. Look at Peacemaker. God. He's looking good. He's just chilling. He's comfy. Sweatpants on. Yeah. Hopefully. He, he's got the best job right now, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, Bobski. Jump out that smoke. Go, go get a double kill. Well, it's going to be out the palace instead. Three people charging in, and JW, he's in trouble. He knows it. He's going to put up the smoke to try and buy some time. Flashbang in the sky as well. Bowski charging through the middle. Shush with a double kill. And just like that, the round is over, man. Fnatic, they are... They're just getting outpaced Ooh. right here. Yeah, these contact plays are so deadly for Fnatic, and their initial defense is not handling the pressure well. Flush is going to get one frag as he backs away, but Mad Lines, this is... They're ending this map with an exclamation point. That is a very aggressive hit. And what, B bomb site last round, this one, it's the A bomb site. Nothing is sacred, nothing is safe for Fnatic. Not even this M4, which is, you know, all the money that they have pretty much stored in this one item. And that's gonna get taken away as well. They were out hunting immediately. They knew exactly where he was. 14 to nine, all of the bank gone for Fnatic. Round loss bonus has started to kick up, but still, what a ridiculous performance here. That's them winning four rounds in a row. They've only lost a single round here on the second half, Mad Lions. And again, 33 and 12 for Bubski. He's completely lost his mind. Yeah, he's, what, 14 kills above Roy, who's also second in the server with 19. He's, uh, Bubski's just destroying Fnatic at the moment. This is an incredible effort. We said to keep our eyes out for him. I, I still don't, I don't think either of us expected a 33 kill performance going into round 24. No. This is uh, fantastic stuff. And I mean, the nice thing is too, he's obviously the powerhouse, the main point of the attack, but they're doing a good job of like adding some lurks, adding some second facets to these attacks. You could see the previous round, the contact play out of Palace, but one player in middle lurking through that connector smoke to backstab as well. So this is just very confusing and very tough for Fnatic to, to deal with, especially if they can't win the first fight. They've gone halfway there, Fnatic, wanting to try and see if they can make it work. I mean, I don't know. I almost wish, I almost feel like they should have just forced in this round. I know they wouldn't have had nearly everything. It would have been kind of scrappy, but... This way, you're kind of, you're, you're 
increasing the odds that it'll be 15 to 9, and then you have to try and fight your way back with, like, you know, six rounds in a row into, into splitting the points, not into overtime, but, um... I don't know. Oh, the Ooh, timing. Oh, turning the corner. That, yeah, that CZ takes so long to come out in Golden. There's no Deagle magic this time. He's shut down. And again, a very... Once the call is made, it is so fast and so aggressive for Mad Lines. That's very cool. Into the B-bombs, there we go. Krims is going to go down, shot to the face. And 15-9, and a six-round lead for Mad Lions, and six chances to close out the map. Wow, this is... I, I don't know what... I don't know what I was... I'm pretty sure I picked Fnatic to, to win this one. Of, I picked Mad Lions. You picked Mad Lions? Maybe I picked... I might have actually picked Mad Lions, too. Oh, I see how it changes. So quick. Well, we have a graphics of it, so, you know, it's, you know, I could bribe someone to change it, but I just, you know, I'm not I'm feeling looking it. looking it up right now. You you indeed picked uh, Mad Lions, but oh. I don't think it really counts if you didn't remember. Really? Listen, it was early in the morning, Jason. <laughs> I, was, I was scrambling to get into the studio, all that stuff. Yeah, I bet. No one goes down on the Mad Lions side, and as you pointed out, 15 to 9. This is amazing. I don't know what to say. Fnatic were doing such a great job in the first half. They were uh, showing us a lot of cool stuff. Golden was acing. It was, it was a good memory, but it's kind of a distant memory now. Yeah, it's faded quickly. That golden ace was quite nice, but yeah, overall, it's, it's pretty much faded. Double old. Ooh, almost with a pick. That was a good attempt for Acor. Yeah, nice little trick. Not going to be able to complete it. Now they slow it down again. They say maybe Fnatic will feel desperate. Maybe they'll try and push somewhere, and in their case, we'll be ready. Uh, Flusher is starting to move up, which is one of the benefits of having the orb over in that position. They can push Golden further towards middle with Crims and JW there. I, I like the setup for Fnatic. I think this is good. Of course, they run boost Acor into the middle, which is not at all unusual. Uh, the problem is this setup has to be excellent. Uh, they And this double op needs to deliver in spades. They can't lose a single round down the stretch. First pick goes to Flusher with the up. That's Bubski. That's the heavy hitter. Can Mad Lions find an entrance without him? One player in Palace is Roy. He's getting close to the end. JW over at the ticket booth with an op, and they've got one in dark. Brolin going to start swinging out and peer towards a ramp. Molotov gives the game up a little bit. They know what's coming, and they heavily convert in their favor. Shush trying to fight his way back in a one versus four, and he's going to go down. JW with a pretty good round there. I think he tanked another couple of people there, but in the end, it's 10 to 15, and the Swedes yeah. are finally back with a round. Yeah, finally. Only their, what, second of this uh, of this half, yeah. which is which is pretty crazy to think about. So five more chances for Mad Lines. And they've got so much money built up. Even after the buy, there's 8,200 on Shush. There's 7,600 on Asilian. These guys have, have so much cash to work with down the stretch as they're losing bonus builds up. But at least initially, the double up setup works p perfect for Fnatic. Yeah, it definitely does. Still have it in play. Quick towards the middle, a lot of smokes on top of Crims, so who knows who could see what inside. They come barreling through and they take him down, and now they're going to keep pushing. Roland is at the CT spawn, but he's going to get smoked up and shot in the face as well. Roy, <laughs> what a kill, and that might just be the game right here. What a knockout punch. Yeah, that's a pop flash into the smoke of Connector and push right into it. Crims had no idea and no chance. He was blinded, so JW pushing it now. Misses the shot, and it's all on Flusher. He's so far away. This is going to be a phenomenal... It feels more dominant than the scoreline. Yes. A victory for Mad Lions. It absolutely does. What a grotesque display that they've brought here today. Bobski currently at 34 kills.